Hey guys, welcome to the Data Tech channel. Hope you guys are doing well and staying safe. Uh, in this channel, we talk about the modern data technologies and also practice uh, and also do hands-on practice on them. Today, we're going to talk about the uh, introduction of Azure Synapse Analytics. Uh, it's going to be part of a, like a web series where we will do uh, advanced stuff, like for example, building pipelines, uh, creating data flows and other machine learning and other kind of stuff in Azure Synapse Analytics. But in this video, it's an introduction video. So <clears throat> without further ado, let's start. So before we go into the details of Azure Synapse Analytics, let's take a look how Azure was before Synapse Analytics. And this is the like, this is the like high level diagram of how uh, data engineering looks in Azure before Azure Snaps Analytics. And here we can see that like to move data from various sources to the sink or you can say uh, letting it reach to the like business users or making a visualization. There are many services involved such as like Data Factory, Databricks and SQL Data Warehouse and those kind of stuff. So <clears throat> It, it have like a lot of moving elements to it. So uh, now let's see how things changed after the introduction of Azure Synapse Analytics. So now you can see what's the data engineering looks in Azure world after the Synapse Analytics introduction. Here we can see only one service is required for moving the data from various sources to consumed by business users or data scientists or other kind of uh, data users. Now you can like it, it, it sh this picture shows that like Azure Synapse Analytics bring a lot of benefits for a data engineer or anybody who was uh, using like those various services in the Azure world. The first thing is like there are like less services so we have less things to maintain, monitor, even learn. So it makes like life of um, data users very easy, easy. And the second is like cost effective. As we are paying only for one service, which is like very cheap compared to paying for like multiple services. So now let's take a look into what is our Snaps Analytics. So in theory, it's a service which brings data and relational database together. It gives users the power to use SQL or Spark at scale on uh, data stored in the data lake or data warehouse. Uh, that's like a theoretical uh, language for Azure Synapse Analytics. But as a user, I'll say like there are like four things which we have to focus. The first one is the Snap Studio. So Snap Studio, it's a unified user interface where, where we can build all our data solutions and we will have a tour of it or see how it, uh, how it looks in a few minutes in demo. And the second thing is like, you can look at the analytics runtime. So as a, we as a user can use either SQL or Spark uh, based on our preference, both are available in Snap's analytics. So that's a pretty cool feature. And uh, SQL is available in like two resource models. One is called, one is like serverless, which uh, where we don't wanna maintain our pools. And the other one is the dedicated SQL pool. And Spark is available only in like dedicated or we can provision according to our need. And the last thing we have to, uh, like one of the, one more thing we, we have to focus is like it have built-in data integration. So whenever we create a workspace in Azure Synapse Analytics, it comes with like linked data lake, which we'll see in few minutes. And also we can ingest more than, we can ingest data from more than 90 plus sources. And the last thing is uh, it have data flow, which, um, which is very helpful in creating pipelines or doing a lot of uh, like data manipulations and transformations for those people who who don't know to code who don't know how to code so let's uh, let's do some hands-on practice on it so <clears throat> the first thing is we have to go to the portal there's a portal here's a portal okay 
This is okay. Sorry, yeah, let me click here. So the first step is to log in into the Microsoft Azure portal, and um, if you don't have an account, don't worry. You can create an account. It comes with two sixty dollars uh, uh, free credit, and which you have, which you you have to use uh, within a month. So I highly recommend like uh, sign up with that and play around with. Uh, as our snaps analytics or any other services in which you are interested without paying and then and uh, once like you're comfortable you can upgrade yourself or uh, or, or like if it's your workplace you don't have to worry about your company is already paying so the first step is to search for the azure snaps analytics so like if you look at the this section of the let me highlight this this section which is highlighted uh, this is like all my recent search. So if you're doing it for the first time, probably you don't have anything, but if you're looking for Azure Synapse Analytics, you type in and you will get Azure Synapse Analytics. You click on this. I already created a workspace to save the time for our, uh, uh, to, to save our time, because like it take a couple of minutes to uh, deploy the workspace so I already created but still I'll show you how to create a workspace that's the step one um, when we want to play with the when we want to do things on this it's like we need a workspace so we click on click on new okay and once you click on new oh sorry my bad I double clicked but uh, when you click on new this window pops up and in this window you have to pick your subscription as we are using the free trial we uh that that's the only subscription but if you have other you can pick what uh, like whatever works for you the second thing is we have to pick the resource group uh resource group is basically a container which hold all related resources together and the uh then you give the workspace name so workspace name of your snaps uh, workspace and it has to be globally unique pretty much like our username in various applications uh, for example gmail like you can't like two people can't have the same gmail name the next piece is picking the reason uh, so you can pick wherever you want i'm on and for example i'm in uh, north america east so i'll pick that for ex uh, and you can pick according to your location so i can see east us2 i can pick that and then uh then the last piece is linking your data lake storage gen 2 to our workspace so if you already have a data lake you can use that if you if you don't like you can create a new one so uh, a bit about uh, data lake it's a it's a, like a blob storage uh which is compatible with hadoop and if you want to know more about it i already have another video for that video, I'll provide the link in the description. You can go and check it out. And so to connect uh, to a data lake storage, we just need account name and the uh, file system name. So account name is uh, whatever is the name of your storage and file system is basically the uh, root or the main folder which will going to contain other folders and file for you. So I, as I said, already created, but uh, if you want, you can create new one. And after that, you don't have to like, keep other things to the default. Click on review and create. You will have your workspace ready. Uh, after that, you will like after a couple of minutes, like once it's deployed, you will see this. And then you can click on your workspace and scroll down and click on open snaps studio. I already uh, open it like it, it it's fast it doesn't take time but uh, you can do that and here like one thing you need to keep in mind like once you're doing it for the first time it asks you to accept the cookies so we have to ex accept it uh, let me close this I will go back to our old one so uh, let's have a quick tour of how snap studio look, uh, look so as you can see this is our landing page where it tells like what new things you can do it like you can ingest data explore visualize and do other stuff so basically you can build whole pipeline or whole data solution within one place so the first component is the data so 
uh, data is basically uh, here you it's a place where you will see all the data uh, which either are linked or you created so when I say you created means like a, like database you create or linked is like to whatever it's going so by default as I mentioned earlier it's linked to the uh, Azure data lake gen 2 when we are creating the workspace so that's that's here and uh, other things you will see here uh, in, in in some time like our uh, like a data warehouse or we can link it to the other like sources too the next piece is the develop so it here we here we develop our code and queries for our data pipelines or all or any transformation the next piece is integrate integrate is the place where we uh, create pipelines or do data flow kind of thing so if you click on this you will see you can create a pipeline and you can copy data tool so basically this functionality is when you have a big data coming from a source and you want to copy it to uh, one of your let's say um, to your uh, data like gen 2 or one of your data warehouse created within snaps analytics so you can do that too and the last uh, and second last is the monitor where you monitor all your jobs uh, and the last piece is the manage so manage uh, it's basically as the name says is to manage all the resources related to your workspace such as like pool link services and uh, triggers access control and you can even connect this to the github so we will see all these things uh, some things in this video but um, some uh, things in the uh, in the future videos so the first thing uh, we want to we want to look into is the spark pool and the sql pool so as soon as like once you open your uh, snap studio click on manage you will come here so let's start with spark sql pool so sql pool basically whenever we create the workspace it comes with a, a default uh, sql pool name built in and which is uh, the which which is uh, serverless so what that mean like we don't have to maintain it and it can scale as per our requirement so let's say if we're running a big query and uh, we don't have to worry about the resources it will scale automatically and the next thing uh, the sql pool is available is like we can create a dedicated sql pool so for that like it's very easy click on new provide the name of the pool and depending on like what, what kind of performance you want so and it's uh, related to your uh, so performance uh, like uh, like if it's available in your a reason and how much you want so that's also related but basically performance level is like if you want uh, a high performance level thing you can uh, expand this or you can like just slide it down like based based on your requirement and as you can see once you increase i know like this is not available in my um reason but uh, you can see we can get uh, like we can get a, a high performance sql pool too but it costs a lot so it's a demo so we'll go to the base sql uh, performance level and give a name uh, i already created but uh, feel free to give whatever name here we don't have any restrictions such as like global or something so let me cancel like i already created this you can see that dedicated tech sql pool and one thing we need to keep in mind like once we created a dedicated sql pool it is associated with the sql database so as soon as we create a dedicated sql pool we'll see a database with the same name in our data section so if we go here and i know like we it says zero but if we refresh this and let's expand see boom it's the same name of our dedicated uh, dedicated SQL pool. So basically, whenever we're creating a dedicated SQL pool, it means we're creating a database for us. So now, at this moment, we have two sources related to this workspace. One is this database. Other one is the link data uh, lake. Okay, one is data database. Other one is the data lake. Let's go to the manage and create a uh, talk about the Apache, Apache Spark pool. So I already created uh, to say I already created a Spark pool to save time, but 
you can create a new one just click on it very simple give the name and then we have to tell like what uh, node size we want whether we want like auto scale to be enabled or not how many nodes we want and uh, click the node size and number of nodes will impact your cost so choose wisely if you just practicing practicing or doing demo kind like just uh, learning so i'll say go for the lowest one like for example like you can give whatever name you want but in the node size always go for the small one if you are learning and doing anything but in case of like your organization you have uh, you have to pick based on your requirements and auto scale also like you can enable or disable auto scale like helps like to scale uh, your uh, performance automatically you don't have to worry about it and nodes you can pick accordingly i already created it so i'll cancel it okay perfect now let's 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 do some development here okay so as you can see we have a database and we have a like we have a sorry we have a database and we have a, a data lake and it's a data lake gen 2 as i mentioned which is a blob store is compatible with hadoop file system it's like basically a file system so but so far we don't have any data so let's start with the uh, uploading some data so i'll go one second uh, let me go to my desktop okay well sorry my bad so we just upload this uh, new york's uh, trip file this is uh, like an open data sets at level um open data sets are basically uh, data sets which are available for public to use and perform to, to do stuff like uh, to do analytics or that kind of things which are available from government so let's upload this data first so we go there click on this uh, upload So yeah, so upload is done now. So we have some data now. So let's we can we, we can do some queries and all those uh, stuff. So I already like wrote the queries, uh, which is uh, available in my GitHub. I'm going to provide the link uh, of my GitHub uh, repo in the in the description, so you can use the same. So let's start with the SQL demo. Okay. Let's copy paste this and I explain like what we are doing there so you know what's going on let's go sorry let's go back to our workspace click on develop uh, let's do a new script oh sorry close this new SQL script and perfect so here you can see it's a very straightforward query like nothing crazy it's a simple uh, select statement where we just looking at the top 100 records from this parquet file so <clears throat> you can see we, we uh, like in connect to we are using built-in uh, SQL pool if you want you can choose the dedicated one let's start with the um, built-in and here like you can like uh, in this interface you can write whatever sql query you want here we're going to show the first 100 records from those parquet files and uh i think this capability is available in parquet json csv or any text file any flat files so let's run this select all run oh sorry my bad uh I need to change the once again let me go so here you see like uh, the location I I had the location from my old code let's go there very quickly so go to the test So the data tech storage is the name. 
we go there, we click on this. And uh, don't be afraid or like feel, okay, well, oh, we're getting error. I always say like getting errors while running the code is the good thing. So you get to know that like what kind of problems you can face when you're doing different kind of things. Uh, okay, we're getting the same error. It says data text storage doesn't exist. Give me one second. Let me go here. This is our data tech workspace. Let's go to the resource, do some debugging. We go our resource group. So we have SQL pools. What is data tech storage? Did I spell it wrong? Let me check. another problem so I'll tell you why I copy paste and fix it the, oh sorry let's create a new one copy paste so the name and change it to SQL make it more interactive mm. So it's data take tech not lake storage which we already fix but the folder name is data this time it should work Boom. go here copy this to a delete to b done Fingers crossed of oh, perfect. If you expand, click on here. So you can see the data here and different data types. Uh, so that's that's like that's for the SQL uh, query. Now let's do some parquet some some stuff with Spark. We go again here, like we already in develop and we create a new notebook and we're going to write some Spark code. So I already have the code, let me go there. And as I mentioned, I'm going to give you the link to this you can play with. And just be, be like, as you saw, like be, just make sure like your names of your like storage and folders are properly aligned, otherwise you will get an error. And let me, so let me fix this very quickly. So users will be replaced by data and this will be perfect now we can copy now let's copy the whole code and I explain what's we doing here control C Go to here, paste, and you see like we are getting a warning that we haven't selected a spark pool. So we can select our spark pool, that warning will go. So here we doing a very simple spark uh, code. So like look, I'll explain one by one. So in the line number four, we just reading those parquet file from uh, data lake, then we Printing the schema, so schema will like always. This is like one of the good practice I always do whenever we reading the data. So the first thing you want to explore the data, like what's in it, what kind of data fields are in there, what what's data data type. Then display like first ten, then create a database. Yeah, so till here like it's see easy and simple. We reading the data, printing it, and displaying the top ten. And after that, we will creating a a Spark database. Uh, name New York taxi so that like once this is executed you will see this New York taxi in your data tab here oh, sorry in workspace along with your data where, along with your 
database and then we doing the repartitioning then this will be make it more uh, yeah this is more readable okay so then we just creating a new york like first we creating a database new york if it doesn't exist and it, here's one and then we just repartitioning and saving the whole data as it is uh, in this table name trip so one thing i want to mention here like uh, at line number nine if you don't create a database spark have a, a default database name with name default so if you don't create it like it will store the table in the default database and after that we just doing a count that's another good practice so that's i'll, I'll say like a, one of the good exploratory or data quality to check how many records we have and after that in this this is a straight sql query we are like just doing an aggregate on the trip table so here you see like on the passenger count dimensions we aggregating the sum and the average of uh, trip distance miles and then of and this where clause says like any trip distance miles which our passenger count which is greater than zero just, just simply, simply aggregate like sum, sum the trip distance, distance mile or average it based on the passenger, passenger count so, so you can, can see group and then we saving it so it's uh, pretty straightforward if you guys have any questions feel free to ask me in comments and i'm going to share this code in um uh like share this code in my github repo and you will find the link in the description so let me run select this and run it So run all is basically if uh, so sorry I went to the run all first. So run all is like if you have multiple notebooks. But here we have only one. Sorry, we'll just click here. Control A again. Click this. Uh, while like it takes some time. So based on like uh, how much data it is, how much cores you're using. In the meantime, we can because like it start the set and you can see it start the sessions and depending on uh, like uh, your resources. How big is your query? It can take time. In the meantime, we can like a, we can create a table in our. Uh, we, we we can look at the our dedicated SQL pool and create a table in it. So let's go to the. Let's go data. No, sorry. Go to our develop again. Click on SQL script, and let me copy. Go for it too. So this time uh, we're creating a table. Let's copy this. So this time uh, we will not use the built-in. We will use the uh, dedicated uh, SQL pool. And here you can see we are creating a table, which uh, pretty standard format of writing. This is a very like a standard SQL query to create. It create table schema name and the table name and then the uh, different fields and their data types and whether they are like null or not and here you will see like with what kind of uh, like a distribution you want like uh, basically uh, by default is round robin but there are like a couple of others hash and flat which we'll talk uh, in future videos like don't worry for now and then we just copying the data from um, from this uh, open data source of Microsoft and storing it in here. So let's run this. It was created. The query is done successfully. Let's go and check. We expand our database and tables. The perfect boom. We have our table. So DBO is the schema name and geography is the table name. And if you ex so if you like currently don't have data, it's just basically a table uh, with no data or like you can say skeleton of tab table. Now let's create a piece of data to it.
perfect and now if we go here and do select top 100 now you can see this so we have data in it and this is the top 100 records so that's how you use like you can use like dedicated SQL pool or uh, SQL uh, or like serverless uh, SQL pool interchangeably but like that's how I want to show you like you can do the uh, like all normal SQL stuff which we do for uh, which we do in our like uh, uh, all traditional data warehouses like Microsoft SQL Server, MySQL and all those stuff and the notebook let's take a look like what's going on with Spark. So command is executed. Let's do. Oh, sorry. Let me delete this. Sorry, there was an error. I didn't say. It's in progress and if you want like you can monitor that too but let's let it finish once this uh, the job finish we, you will see um, like uh, another spark uh, you will see uh, a database name New York taxi and spark in front that's like a, with a spark symbol like here you use this is a symbol of a database there you will see a spark symbol and that means like it's a spark table which uh, basically here it looked like okay it's pretty much like a database but it's not so you can see we executed this successfully and let's refresh this sorry my bad like i need to So now you see a folder where like uh, this is basically stored in data lake but you will see that in your workspace too just give me a moment like refresh again sometimes it takes times perfect Ooh. so here you can see now like new york taxi which we created and it will have two tables one is named trip the other one is the passenger account trip is the entire copy of our parquet file and passenger account is basically the aggregated stuff which we did and uh, if you the other thing which if you remember i mentioned like if we don't create a database like there will be a default spark uh, database and it i know like here it looked like okay it's stored in like it looked like a table and a database a table kind of structure but actually this these two are stored in the data lake so if we go uh yeah look in the workspace Let's see new york taxi db so it's basically stored on the data lake but uh, it's uh, for a user it's uh, presented as a database and a table which is a good thing so this is a personal view and then the last thing I want to show like if this is a spark table but still you can do a SQL script on it and you can literally do a, like a spark stuff on it and same goes with the uh, with a, like a SQL databases too like if, with this we can do a SQL script and a node like a spark job too so personally i like that like we can change things we, we, we can use uh, sql and spark interchangeably but it depends on your preference what you want to use so that's uh, that's all for this video if you uh, if this video helps you please like and subscribe it and uh, please share your feedback and suggestions in comment sections and uh and we will be making like uh, another video where we will building a pipeline for it and uh, in the meantime, stay safe and thanks again. Have a good one.